Good afternoon. Please have a seat. So here we are. Welcome to the closing ceremony. Um, the first thing I'm going to do today is a really a great honor because we are the general chair of this year, but if we are here, it's because Robert Caillot, in 1994, created this conference series, and he also was the first general chair. He is our grand-grand-grand-grand-grandfather. He taught us that a web conference could exist. And that's a really great pleasure for me for a closing ceremony to have this visionary person give a take-home message. Please, Robert, join me on stage. I'll give you a better picture later on. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me and giving me the floor for a few moments. Uh, this is the first time in my life I'm actually reading from paper because I had so little time to prepare. Um, and yes, uh, I'm to blame for setting off this series of conferences in a call for papers in December 1993. And uh, that was in competition with um, NCSA, and when I put the call out on Friday, on Saturday morning, I got a phone call from Joseph Hardin saying, we have organizing a conference. I said, yes, but my call is out first, so we'll do it first in Geneva and then in Chicago. And so it went. So that was, num oh, gone. Number two on the long list there. <coughs> And since this happened in 93, so this is almost the 25th anniversary, right? Um, and yes, I feel old about that too. Uh, I'm going to give you some personal opinions. Uh, I'll speak a bit about the web and the internet of things and artificial intelligence because I heard that was on the program, so I couldn't resist. Uh, but I'm speaking to the converted and preaching to knowledgeable people uh, so this is all really in vain and just entertainment. About the web, well, let's face it, the web and the internet would have happened sooner or later in a form probably very close to what uh, we know now. It had been in the air for decades. Polotle saw it vaguely in 1934. Um, the Minitel attempted it, including micropayments, in 1982. And let me tell a bit more about that specific aspect. When I needed a keynote speaker for that first conference, and I meant a real keynote, somebody who opens it and sets a tone, uh, I invited David Chaum, the inventor of Secure Digital Cash, because I was convinced that the vicious triangle of author, reader, financed by advertising, was really bad, and it was wrong, and micropayments were what we needed. We still have not got micropayments, actually, right? But the mobile phone infrastructure can actually do it, so let's hope that we're on the verge of that now, somehow. Now, of course, one can argue that advertising is a form of tax that is paid by those who actually have enough money to buy the things and is then re redistributed uh, to everyone so that they can get free content access. But the business model of the GAFAS, uh, the GAFAS is a word you all know, yeah, I guess. Um, it does exploit the weak. If there were much less income inequality in the world, fewer poor and fewer ultra-rich, then this tax metaphor with the advertising would be much less defendable and micropayments would be much more acceptable, I think. 
A second uh, topic is oaths of fealty. Throughout my activities in, in several different fields, ranging from <clears throat> really uh, basic engineering uh, all the way to public communication, I always favored individual independence. I do not like centralized systems of the mainframe type with terminals. I do not like dogmatic structures run by intermediaries, whether it's religious or commercial. And I don't like clouds. Well, the real ones, yes, but the other ones not. To paraphrase the Scots about whiskey, I prefer my computing straight. Now, when a technology becomes a commodity, it can be run by about anyone. And that's the point at which the intermediaries and the manipulators descend like vultures and have great difficulty containing their greed. So there is this sort of stress here. There were big changes in the uh, history of computing. We started with mainframes, uh, then we had mini computers and then we had microcomputers, and now we have mobile devices. And each time there was some hope that the people going to these new technologies would gain more independence. But each time it wasn't long before the intermediaries and the manipulators wormed themselves in again. They were always busy making centralized systems and trying to put a leash around my neck. They actually hire armies of professional obfuscators so that you cannot understand what you sign up to, but it's still legal. And under the guise of making it easier, they dumb things down, especially the consumer. Now, the web, when it came, also looked like a way out. Uh, but I think we failed miserably to provide publishing for the individual. It was supposed to be as easy to write for the web as it was to read it. But in fact, today, it's closer to a trapdoor function. Right? Setting up your own site, let alone your own server, is a horrendously difficult affair. And no, please, Linux guys, don't tell me it's otherwise. It's not true. It is difficult. On the other extreme, if you jump in bed with a commercial social network, you don't need to do anything to get all the information and unwanted content and notifications that you uh, will get. But you sign some oath of fealty. You're in a neo-feudal system. The gaffers are commercial empires that are almost indistinguishable from totalitarian states. They're still legal or very strict religions. They are centralized systems in which you are the terminal. I don't need to tell you that, you all know that. And of course, they decide what is acceptable. They make token promises now towards the European Union's general data protection regulation, uh, which will require underage youngsters to declare themselves uh, to get access, and of which the BBC wrote yesterday, it's not clear how the age limit will be verified. I call that the euphemism of the day, right? or maybe of the month. In parallel, two important votes recently have been meddled with, and I wonder if we should not insist that they be held again. So we must fight off creeping gradient censorship, ideological monopolies, and targeted brainwashing. Neutrality is not about uh, bandwidth. It's about unfiltered access, which is going to be, I think, very difficult. Personally, I get increasingly ostracized by browsers and services because I have my own domain name. I also don't need to tell you that. In fact, the difficulty of publishing and the absence of micropayments has recently 
even led to a mass shooting. Now, my criticisms should not imply that I am an anarchist. I believe rather in a sort of a republic of responsible citizens as a possible means of containing the excesses of human nature. And let's also not uh, deny it. Human nature is there. You, you can't really change it, so we'll have to cope with it. But a republic, a res publica, the public thing, the common good, should serve its citizens. But it still needs some form of order some agreed upon rules of conduct. Anarchism doesn't get you that. So while I'm not in favor of the cathedral, I'm also not in favor of the bazaar. Do I need to elaborate? Probably not. So even if we could all publish on our own service, there would still be the need of, for rule of law, and we would still need to make those laws, agree to them, and implement them somehow a physical mechanism from which trust flows is missing on the internet. Will we be able to find it? Uh, I have no answers to many of the questions, to, to all of the questions that I'm posing here, I have no answers. <laughs> but I think that a, a World Wide Web can unfortunately only reasonably function inside a worldwide government. Or are there other means? We shall see. Now, the initiators of computing and networking, <clears throat> and you are among them and I was among them, were largely naive and ignorant of the motivation of the people out there. They were nerds and geeks, socially not very astute. They are parodied in sitcoms like The Big Bang Theory. Uh, also don't need to elaborate on that, I think. They were not driven by profit but by peer esteem, and they were even honest. So let us keep this honesty, but let us nerds and geeks work at understanding human nature, looking for ways to contain stupidity and greed. Don't know if we can find that. Um, the Internet of Things. Anyone have a toaster? Nobody has a toaster? Who has a toaster? Yeah, all hands go up. Right, exactly. You know this thing that you set a timer to color the bread? Now, if we had a really intelligent toaster, I would set the color that I desire, not the timer. And it would do it independently of what type of bread I put in there, whether it's been frozen or not, whether it's white or brown. I set the color, that's the color of toast I want to come out. That would be an intelligent toaster. Make that first before you make the Internet of Things. <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, somebody, a guy called Bashir Toom, has worked on that. But you can't buy it. Artificial intelligence. <clears throat> I don't think it's dangerous. It's the universe's way forward. It's what comes naturally after biology. Or it, would, it is what should come naturally after biology. Because the laws of physics of this universe make possible the emergence of life. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in this auditorium. <clears throat> but it is not obvious that the laws of this universe make it possible to have artificial intelligence. So we may never get there. Now, the real problem is not artificial intelligence or the Internet of Things. If the artificial intelligence does take over, we can't even begin to know what will happen, and we shouldn't worry, and it will be okay, and Fermi's paradox will be solved, and it's all right. But if it doesn't, and if humans indefinitely stay in control, then the real problem is the total overpopulation of this planet. And I have promised myself that I would finish every talk I gave with, with this consideration. I think it means reducing our numbers on Earth, not by 
not by 20 million, not by 2 billion, but by a factor of 20. Think about it. Thank you all for attending, organizing, and carrying forward this conference series, and good luck with the next one. Thank you. So, as I said at the introduction, Lionel, Pierre-Antoine, and I wouldn't be here if you hadn't created it. So, uh, this is going to be a one-time award oh. for being the first chair oh, oh, oh. from the Lion community. Thank, Thank you very you much. Very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would like to call on stage two exceptional persons who had created the scientific core of the conference, Munia and Panos, because they have a very important job to do, the last one for us, which is the award ceremony. Please welcome the program chairs. Okay, first I would like to uh, thank the organizer. Uh, it's been amazing. They trusted us and uh, they made us very happy by uh, ensuring a superb conference. Um, so now it's the time for the uh, best paper uh, award, but we're going to start first with the best reviewers. Uh, we need people to review, uh, to do a, a good job. It's a lot of work. We all complain where our paper does not get in, so we really try to also recognize the, the big effort of the people. As from now on, uh, Panos will speak, because otherwise I might start coughing. So he's taking uh, over. Okay. Uh, thank you, Munya. So I would like uh, to thank uh, very much the reviewers uh, who put the effort uh, to put together uh, this program. Uh, we think that reviewing is one of the mostly thankless jobs uh, within uh, our community. Everyone wants to get papers published, and uh, they want to talk, and uh, they get, want to get their papers accepted. Uh, unfortunately, it is uh, hard to also write the reviews th that are necessary for papers to be accepted. And, uh, this year we had uh, 1,232 uh, reviewers, and uh, at the end of the process, we asked uh, the track chairs to identify and nominate uh, the reviewers that were most helpful and provided uh, the insight uh, necessary to decide which papers uh, should be accepted. And uh, we got the nominations, and would like to acknowledge uh, uh, the top 1% of uh, the reviewers that uh, participated. Uh, there is a higher selectivity here than for best papers. So if you are here, I would like uh, you to come on stage and uh, we'll give you your award. So we have uh, Rediet, Abeb, Jeremy Blackburn, Tan Moy, Chakraborty, Dina, Denmer Fusman, Jelel, Edin Difala, Emilio Ferrara, Vanessa, Fries Martinez, uh, Ran Zilad Bachrach, uh, David Alaniado, Afra Mashadi, Michael Matthew Dakis, Preston McAfee, Luke McDowell, David Motin, uh, Zepino Pucci, uh, Kirk Roberts, Marcus Strommeyer, Gianmarco De Francisco Morales, and uh, Mahadev uh, Satya. Thank you, everyone. Now you know when I ask panels to speak. Anyone? I, I sympathize. Anyone of the reviewers in the room? We have the certificates. Mm. Nope. Okay. It's going to be they a so short tired. award ceremony. Okay. So, uh, now for uh, 
uh, the best paper. So we had uh, more than uh, 1,200, almost, you know, 1,170 uh, something submissions uh, and uh, 170 papers accepted. And then we asked uh, reviewers to nominate uh, best papers uh, and structures to nominate uh, uh, best papers. So we received uh, the nominations, uh, we examined and we created uh, a short list of uh, the papers that uh, we considered uh, to be among uh, the best uh, papers. So all these papers uh, receive uh, honorable mentions for being among the very best papers that were submitted and accepted in this year's uh, conference. So the names of the papers are Short-Term Intervention for Long-Term Fairness in the Labor Market by Lily Hu and uh, Healing Chen, Aesthetic-Based Clothing Recommendation by Wen Hui Hu, uh, Hui Di Zhang, uh, Zhang Nan, He, Hu Chen, Li Ziyong, and uh, Zheng Qin, an automated approach uh, to auditing disclosure of third-party data collection in website privacy policies by Timothy Liebert. Uh, did you really have a heart attack? towards robust detection of personal health mentions in social media by Payam uh, Karisani and Eugene Agustin. Facebook Alive are social broadcasts, really broadcasts by Aravind uh, Rahman, Gareth Tyson, and Isan Sastri. Fully dynamic case center clustering uh, by Hubert Chan, Arnaud Gerkin, and uh, Mauro Socio. High Life, High Red Higher Parity Fact Harvesting by Patrick Ernst, Amy Siu, and uh, Gerard Wycombe. Large Scale Analysis of Style Injunction uh, by Relative Path Override, Sahat uh, Arsad, uh, Seyed Ali Mirhadari, Tobias uh, Longyear, uh, Bruno Crispo, Engin Kirda, and William Robertson. Me, My Echo Chamber, and Thai Introspection on Social Media Polarization by Nabil Gilani, Anne Yuan. Martin Sanfeski, Sorus uh, Vosugi, and uh, Deproy, and uh, minimizing latency in online ride and delivery services uh, by Abhimanyu Das, Srinivas Golapudi, Anthony Kim, the Malaya Panikrahi, and uh, Saitanya Swami. So these were the papers. Uh, uh, give a round of applause to these uh, people. So. To decide which of these papers get the best paper award, uh, we formed an independent uh, uh, committee headed by Yi Chang, who recruited uh, uh, the other members of uh, the committee, who read all the papers and uh, decided uh, what is the best paper award uh, for this year. So without further ado, we'd like to thank the best paper committee, and the winner is uh, High Life. High Rarity for Harvesting by Patrick Ernst, Amy Siu, and Gerard Wycombe. So, please come on stage. I think we're done. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And now we'd like to call Amelie on stage in order to uh, give the best demo award. Hello. Thank you very much. It was a great honor to be co-chair with Paul Gross of this demo track. So the web conference is perhaps the, my favorite conference. And I think the demos are really important to support research methodology with need tools to interact with the research to improve the research. And so uh, we took into we took into account the audience vote 
and uh, but also we took uh, into account the reviews and uh, if it's innovative, timeless. And so we would like as well to thank all the reviewers, other reviewers for this specific track. And so I will talk about the honorable mansion. So two paper. Two papers have been. So we have three honorable papers. One which is Barcelona No, empowering citizens with interactive dashboards for human data explorations. The second one was the one with the music and the guitar. Perhaps you all have noticed it. It's a real time emulation of a guitar tub amplifier, audio pedals, and a virtual pedal board. And and the third one is about, so this morning we had a keynote about privacy, and uh, she talked about uh, the GPDR, this new European regulations, which is an, uh, about general data protection regu regulations, which has been um, adopted in 2016, and you know, it will be enforceable in a few days, in May 2018. So it's really t this paper is really t timeless. So this is why, it's why we decided, uh, and because of the audience vote, to, this is, uh, to select it as the best demo award. Thank you, Amélie. And now I would like to call the poster chairs to give the best poster award. And that will be by Serena Villata. Thank you. Okay, so it's uh, my honor to award uh, the best poster for uh, Dab 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 uh, or the webconf. Sorry, Fabien. Um, Philip uh, already has to catch a fly, so he's not uh, here to join me. So uh, we have selected three uh, posters, uh, actually based on uh, your votes. We have selected uh, those with more votes, and we have also looked at uh, the reviews uh, they have received. Uh, and it's uh, the time uh, to actually uh, thank all the uh, reviewers for the huge work, also for the poster track, because each poster received uh, at least uh, three, and uh, almost all of them four reviews. So it was uh, a huge uh, reviewing work uh, also for uh, this track. So three papers, uh, which uh, has uh, honorable mentions. So first one is an improved sampler for Bayesian personalized ranking by leveraging view data. The second one is identifying time intervals for knowledge graph facts. And the third one is open information extraction with global structure constraints. So we are happy to say that actually there was a, a kind of agreement between uh, your votes and uh, the reviewers because uh, uh, the, best the, best the best best poster award uh, goes to uh, a, a poster which was actually one uh, on, on the top five posters. And uh, just to raise the, the expectation, so the winner is an improved sampler for Bayesian personalized ranking by leverage view data. And I guess none of the authors is here. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. 
This is the moment where I start to relax. <laughs> so, uh, the first person I want to talk about is you. You as an audience, you as a community. This week, you were 2,290 2, people. And I, I, I stopped counting at 2,290 people just to be polite to Jean-Francois Abermatic in the room because I think his record in Paris a long time ago was 2,300. So. I also wanted to tell you uh, what it means in terms of tweet activity, and I would like to thank Sebastian for his work in following that. Uh, we generated 7,500 tweets, which uh, apparently touch more than 8 million tweets account. Uh, and they generated uh, two, uh, 25 million views of these tweets in the timeline. And the good news are the two last lines. As you see, the word I cannot pronounce, the tag that you cannot name, is disappearing. And last but not least on this slide, I, I would really like to thank the entire crew of the webcaster team who's been recording and webcasting all the plenary sessions right now, uh, this one including. And right now we already are reaching 10,000 views uh, in total on the web through different platforms. So big kudos to them. The conference and the crazy idea of having it a second time in Lyon and organizing it a second time in Lyon would not exist without the entire LOC. So Smita, Laurent, Raphael, Frédéric, Maud, Sébastien, Yvan, and Luc were the crazy people who convinced me to be general chair a second time. And to be honest, uh, good reason to do that from a scientific point of view, that you have the ability to influence the scientific choices, adding new tracks, shaping the panels and the keynotes, and I really took a lot of pleasure in doing that. But in addition to that, there is a human uh, pleasure too. And the, the human dimension, the real reason why I accepted, is because this group and these two guys behind me are excellent, and they are the reason why I accepted to do that again from a human perspective. That being said, there is one person I want to come on stage now. I know she's right now hating me. <laughs> she probably, I mean, she's too polite to swear, but she's hating me. She's going to come on stage, otherwise, Laurent by her side is going to force her. <laughs> Smita is our project manager because running a web conference is a project, a huge project with many people involved. And without a project manager, you are doomed. She saved us. And for that, thank you very much. So again, many thanks to the LOC. Again also, again also um, many thanks to all the chairs, uh, not only uh, the program chair and their track chair, but also all the alternate track chair. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, 80 chairs we named uh, on different position. Their name are on the screen. I'm not going to read them because we are all tired uh, right now. They are on the website, but I really, really appreciate the work they've done. Uh, and a second group of people I have to thank, they are sitting in the back right now. And that's actually, it's a very good metaphor because they are the guy doing it, the background task of the conference. They run the, in the background. They do all the job which is needed for you to find your rooms, to go around, to help you. They are the volunteers of that community, and from year to year, they make the conference possible. I would like first a round of applause for them.
And there is one thing I really like to do at the web conference, uh, is to ask now to come on stage, all the chairs that are in the room, all the volunteers that are sitting there, as, as well as all the, part, the members of the lock, so that we can take one picture and that you can see what group it takes to run that conference. Please come here, all of you. Please, please group yourself so that we have a chance for the photograph not to get mad. <laughs> Step on the lion. So you see what it, it's only a small sample of all the people it takes to create that conference. Yeah, yeah, come, please come, if you want. You participated to create, and the weekly workshop was great. So. Oh my God. It is? All the volunteers are still here. No, else has got out. Oh, okay. Okay, last chance for Leila not to run away. <laughs> please, please, so that we can all go home. The photograph, where is, where is the photograph? Where is he? Ah, he's there. Okay, thank you. So that's all folks, and as general chair, the last thing I have to say is see you all in San Francisco next year. Thank you.